This video will provide a very brief overview of using Barracut by demonstrating using a Doosan Puma TT1800SY machine. Um, so this is this is Vericut. You've If you've ever used a Microsoft product, you're probably familiar with this user interface. It uses the ribbon just like any other Microsoft product with a series of tabs that walk you through the features that are available within Vericut. Um, all of this is user configurable. This is just how I particularly like to set up Vericut. Um, you can see I've got the NC program um, displayed here. I've got a, a logger that will track any any near misses or any errors or any warnings. Um, that's going to be very useful. I'll show that in a little bit. And obviously we've got a machine that's displayed. And then everything for Vericut is configured within something called the project tree. Um, so the number one question that we get is, what does it take to set up a Vericut simulation? So first, obviously, you need what we call a virtual machine and control. That's the machine that you're looking at here. Um, it's a 3D representation of the machine. The buzzword these days is that it's a digital twin. Um, and it is not only just the models of the machine, but it's also some kinematic definitions of, of how the machine is going to move. And then most importantly, it's a control file. And the control file is significant because it is going to interpret the GNM codes that are going to drive the physical machine. So the same exact GNM codes that drive the virtual machine is what's going to drive your real machine. And that's, and that's very important. That's very significant. So like I said, all of this stuff is configured within this project tree. So we've got our NC program, we've got our tools, any subroutines or anything like that are all going to be found in this project tree. The good news is, is that if you're using a CAD CAM system, and I imagine you are, everything in this project tree is going to be configured using one of the many interfaces to Vericut. Um, the only additional thing that might be required within your CAM system is establishing a coordinate system that's going to tell the interface where to populate the cut stock um, and other relevant information within the, the virtual machine configuration. So that's the only additional step that you need to do. Other than that, it's just a matter of a few mouse clicks to transfer everything from your CAM system into Vericut. So, you know, obviously we've got the shell of the machine displayed. You probably wouldn't want to see that. I'll start this running just because it is kind of neat the way there is a command that opens up the door for you. So, but most of the time you're probably not going to want to be displaying all of the all of the outside skin information. So, we can very quickly just make that translucent and really get to the heart of what it is that we want to see. And you can see that when I went translucent, it also made the tran tools translucent. Some people like that for different reasons. I'm going to just turn that off for now so that we can see the tools nice and clear. So I will go ahead and just continue cutting here. And you'll notice that it's processing even with all the sync codes because this is a two-channel machine. Um, and you can see that I've already capturing some errors and, and messages here in the logger. Um, so if I go into something called review mode and click on any one of those errors, it's going to take me to the exact line of code that created that issue. So not only did it did it take me to the line of code that created the problem, but it also moved the machine itself into the position. And obviously, you wouldn't want the upper turret banging into the lower turret. So as long as I'm here, I thought I would show that you know these this, these are pretty you know complicated setups with these multi-tool stations. Um, and I did want to highlight that that is a somewhat new feature in Vericut. Yeah, let me get out of this here real quick. So we do have something called a multi-tool station, and you can configure those in the tool manager, and it's pretty straightforward. Again, you can bring those over from your CAM system as well. And if I go into this turret setup, this is where you can see this is how the tools can be populated or moved around on the turret. Um, so we've got multi-tool stations in here with multiple tools. You can see we've got the upper turret and the lower turret. And you can literally just drag and drop from either a tool manager or you can select them from a drop down, whatever you need to do. So I just wanted to highlight that real quick. Um, I will go ahead and set this up to stop at the errors. You can have it stop for any number of reasons. So I'm going to have it stop in the future so that we don't have to go back and try to find the issues that, that took place. And you can see it stopped again. Um, it looks like in this particular case, what do we have going here? Looks like a maybe a fast feed error, yeah. So again, that might be easy to miss, but as long as you're capturing this stuff in the logger, you're going to be able to analyze and interrogate that at a later time. 
So we'll go ahead and just play this to the end here. And that's it. There are a number of reports that can be generated, so you can create any number of different types of reports. You could share a review file, um, which is a 3D representation that doesn't require a license. You can share that with operators so that they know what to expect. Um, but again, I really wanted to just kind of scratch the surface on what Vericut is capable of using this Doosan Puma 2 turret machine as an example. So. Obviously, if you have any other questions, contact CG Tech, and we would be happy to answer them or dive into any feature in more detail.